Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I bring you a detailed tutorial on how to make a, a princess that bustier dress with a collar, with yoke and collar. Okay, and the lower part of this dress is going to be a 180 degree flare. So this tutorial, this video is packed with lots and lots of sewing techniques. So we're going to just start right now. So this here is my starting point, also my shoulder line. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take my vertical measurements. The vertical measurements are the measurements that run across the length of the body okay why the horizontal measurements are those that run around around the width of the body around the circumference of the body okay so here i've marked my bust points my under bust and my half length now to all of these measurements i'm adding half inch to it okay so if your bust point is your bust point is 10 you're going to make it 10 and a half if your under bust is 14 you'll make it 14 and a half okay so I've also marked my chest line. The chest line is derived by dividing your bust measurement by 6 plus 2 inches. So I'm going to extend all these lines into a straight line. Now guys, I'm starting from the scratch, okay, to make this princess that bustier. Now I already have a detailed tutorial on my channel on how to make a princess that bustier. That tutorial, that video is so detailed and precise, okay. So this is not disputing that that video is not okay. I just like to, you know, teach us new techniques so that you can walk around them find the one you prefer the most okay so that's why i am making this new princess that bustier tutorial so on the shoulder length i'm going to mark half of my shoulder measurement okay and i'll mark the same thing on the chest line then connect into a straight line right so that's my armhole line right okay so i'm going to determine my neck width okay okay so i'll, I'll do three by three for the front okay three inches width and three inches depth for the front right so i'll just go ahead and you know connect my neckline okay so after that i'll start taking my measurements okay taking the measurements around the body okay so like i said i have a detailed tutorial on my channel okay on how to make a princess that bustier okay that tutorial would give you a perfect princess that bustier this one would give you a perfect, a perfect princess that bustier as well okay so just try the two out find the one you prefer okay i'll be in the comment section right so on the shoulder line or on the armhole line i'll come down by one inch for my shoulder slope okay and i'll connect that to my neck width afterwards i'll add half inch to the shoulder okay so this will be my seam allowance to join the shoulder okay so if you're going to do this you're going to ignore adding half inch to your vertical measurements remember i said if your boss point is 10 make it 10 and a half if it's 15 if your under boss is 15 make it 15 and a half okay the reason is so that when you join the shoulder with half inch your measurements are going to come up all right so that's why i said add those half inch okay but if you're not going to be adding that okay make sure you add half inch to your shoulder okay when i'm sewing i'll just trim that off because i've already added half inch to all my vertical lines now on the chest line i marked quarter of the bust measurement plus two inches seam allowance on the half length i marked quarter of the waist measurement plus two inches seam allowance and i'll connect them into a straight line or a slant line now when i say quarter of the bust or the waist measurement i mean the measurements divided by four right so from the shoulder slope i'm going to mark half of this my armhole line okay so we'll just note that i was will continue then on the bust point i'm going to mark my bust pan measurement divided by two plus half inch now the bust pan is the nipple to nipple measurement that's the distance from one nipple to the other nipple so if you divide it by two whatever it gives you add half inch to it that half inch is same allowance so i've marked the bust pan on the bust point under bust and half length so and i've connected it into a straight line so i'll just make a slant line from the bust point to the half of the armhole line that we created before all right so this is pretty easy and i hope you understand till now now this is time to start taking your bust that okay so towards the center front i'm taking that of half inch on the under bust and on the half length i'll connect that in a straight line okay it's similar to my previous princess that was that tutorial okay the technique the technique or the difference here is around the armhole right so on the boss point i'll go up by one inch and come down by one inch okay this is just to eliminate back um puff or pointing it pointiness around the boss point okay so i'm just going to connect from the on the boss to the boss point okay to that one inch i came down by the boss point right 
now that's it so i'm taking this measurement to be sure that i have my bust point and everything accurately my bust point my under bust okay so i like to always double check okay because if you don't do this you're going to end up having a cup size that is bigger than the cup of your client or the cup size or the bust of your client right so after that i'm going to take uh, the that towards the side front right so i have this on Okay, I have this under bust size chart that I use to make my princess that bustiers or any type of bustier I'm making. Okay, so I'm working with bust 35. All right, so on the screen, you'll be seeing the under bust size chart. Okay, so work with the one that suits your bust um, measurement. So for bust 35, it is 1.5. So I'm marking 1.5 on the other that leg okay that's towards the side front right so i'm just going to connect that to one inch below the bust point okay so i have created my bust here all right so it's just to extend it to the armhole that is left okay to extend the other that that's the armhole now so i took a that of 1.5 inches okay on on the under bust so from that half of my armhole and i'm coming down by 1.5 okay so i'm going to make a slant line okay from one inch above the bust point to that 1.5 inches that i came down by okay so and i've created the other that okay the others decide that okay so what i'll do would be to replace the that okay to extend the that okay so i did 1.5 so i'm extending by two inches just so that we don't have an excess but you can extend by exactly the same 1.5 but i like to add additional half inch to it okay so that when you're sewing you don't have a shortage it's better you have uh, an excess right so i'll just connect that to that's that extension that i just made there on the armhole all right and that is it this is just your princess double step okay so this is another technique like i said guys it's another technique you can decide to follow this or the previous one that i did now this is time for that replacement so whatever that i took i'm going to be replacing the dart plus one inch to sew it okay so on the half left i took a dart of two inches okay so i'm replacing the two inches plus one inch to couple the pattern together all right so at this chest line i also marked that i have there it's just it's just half inch all right so i also replaced the dots all right then added allowance to stitch it and that's just it okay so this is basically your princess that was said this pattern or this method is fast and easy all right so just you know walk around it choose the one you prefer right so i'm just going to make sure that i don't have sharp or pointy corners around the bust point okay so we're going to do a lot of blending here okay just blending in perfectly that's the region around the bust so you don't want to have a pointy edge now for my yoke i'm going to measure my bust radius okay so the bust radius is just the distance from the bust point to the under bust so the bust point the under bust i'm working with is 13.5 and the bust point is 11 okay so subtracting that will give me um 2.5 okay so that's her bust radius okay so i'm just going to mark ideally i'm supposed to mark from the bust point okay or just take my chest length to be my yoke but this person does not want to have uh, her body showing so from the chest line i went up by 2.5 inches which is her bust radius okay so even after explaining to her that i would be using a net for the yoke she doesn't want to expose her body at all okay so even if i, I explained to her she refused i told her i wouldn't be using a net i'll use a fabric that won't show her body but she insisted that she wants uh, she doesn't want the yoke to be too much all right so what i did was just to come down by six inches because i realized that going up by 2.5 is not just going to give me what i want for a yoke it's still short for a yoke me i'll just work with you know my chest line provided i'm working with uh, a fabric that will not expose the bust okay so but if you're working with net or organza or whatever that will expose your bust just mark your bust radius um from your bust point okay and that will just give you where to place your yoke okay so i'll connect that i connected that to half of my armhole measurement okay so that's my yoke then i'll cut out my pattern now okay so that's how to create your yoke okay so you can decide you can even make seven inches eight inches whatever you prefer okay even if you want to expose your cleavage it's just you is what you prefer it's your preference right so for this person she doesn't want something that would expose any part of her body even after explaining, I keep hammering on this. Even after explaining that, I'll be working with a fabric that is not transparent. Okay, so let's continue. All right, so I'll just uh, cut out. I want us to, you know, 
I want to lay more emphasis for on how to cut this process that was there, okay? Because you might get your pattern right, you might draft your pattern right, like very well, okay? But cutting might just be an issue. If you cut out pointy corners, it's going to give you pointy princess that was there. So just gently, okay? Cut around the cuff, okay? Just be rounding your hand. I hope that's good English, I don't know. So just be, you know, bending your hand, rounding it, okay? Just to follow that bust shape. So so you cut out okay so that's how to cut that uh, the side of your princess that was there the side front right so now i want to cut the that towards the center front okay so it's also easy you just okay so you just follow the shape and also make sure that you, you follow it exactly so that you don't have pointy edges at that point okay so just like this right so you cut to the middle of the armhole okay so that's it right okay now if you're wondering how to make the dormant sleeve because this uh this sleeve is a dormant sleeve it's cut together okay so what you're going to do is just to add three inches to your shoulder okay to your shoulder like when you are that's right to your fabric okay you just mark three inches just add three inches to it okay so that's how you get that dormant sleeve three inches is enough right so my clients want to add uh, normal sleeves to hers Okay, so I've trimmed off the yoke, and for the yoke, you'll be adding half inch to the yoke, okay, to below the yoke, and half inch at the upper part of the center front, okay? All right, so you know that where I transfer to your fabric, everything is going to be on fold, right? The front pattern is going to be folded, or your fabric is going to be folded into two, okay? That way, when you cut the center front, you're going to have one, okay, you, you to be on fold, right? But you have two pieces for the side front, right? So, we want to cut the lower part now, okay? I want to show, so this is my yoke. I added half inch towards the lower part of the yoke and half inch towards the neckline, okay? Around the neckline, I added half inch, okay? Then this is the lower part of the center front, okay? So I also added um, half inch at the upper part. I hope you can see it well, okay? So this is the back. The back is your normal uh, waist dart, okay? The back has a normal waist dart, okay? So that is it. So I want to now cut the lower part, which has the circle uh, skirt, okay? The circle skirt pattern or the half circle skirt okay so i folded my fabric to cut my half circle on my 180 degree flare but because this table is not wide enough to start showing us how to you know fold that i'm going to use this pattern paper to explain how to fold to cut your 180 degree flare right so the waist is 33 inches okay so you're going to be needing zip allowance 1.5 inches on the left 1.5 inches on the right okay so 1.5 times 2 give us 3 so 33 which is the waist plus 3 inches that's 36 all right so i'm going to divide in, i'm going to be dividing 36 by 3.14 okay so that's the formula for deriving a 180 degree flare divide the circumference by 3.14 so the circumference right there is the waist which is 33 plus my zip allowance that's 36 so 33 36 divided by 3.14 is 11.4 I would approximate that to 11.5 okay so 11.5 right now is the radius for this circle uh, this 180 degree flare then 30 inches is the length of the skirt okay we're going to be attaching this skirt pattern to the upper part that we just drafted okay so 30 plus 11.5 that's 41.5 so you're going to be needing 41.5 okay that's the key point we're holding now 41.5 which is the length of the of everything that we've just done okay so you're going to cut 41 and a half in two places okay so that you when you fold okay you're going to have 41 and a half along the width okay the or the length of what you folded will be 41 and a half so it means you're going to have around 82 or 83 okay i'm going to cut that 83 inches so that by the time you fold you're going to have uh, 41 and a half okay so then when you fold into two you now fold like this okay in form of bias in the triangular form like so okay so that is how you fold all right so don't mind the excess that you have they're going to trim it off 
okay so that's how you fold then from there you mark the radius which is 11.5 okay so that's how what we have so you mark 11.5 all the way round then you connect okay then from that 11.5 you now mark 30 okay i'm just assuming that this is the values that we need okay so i mark 30 all the way round okay so that is it okay then you're going to then cut out it's pretty easy i have a detailed tutorial on my channel on how to cut a 180 degree flare okay i'm also going to link the video the video down below okay in the description box all right so this ss you just cut it but when you're cutting just make sure that you don't cut that folded part okay so it doesn't open up your flare right so the next thing would be to cut through the radius okay so when you cut this out you now have your 180 degree flare you can see it's a half circle flare when you open it you see that you have just a half half circle this is a circle but you just have half of it okay so that's why it's called the 180 degree flare right so after drafting that i'm just going i've just shown you how to fold and you know draft it okay because i wouldn't be having enough space to show you how to fold your fabric with this my table all right so i've marked okay so from the top here you remember we have 11.5 as the radius so i'm just doing it again so that you see so i mark 11.5 all round like this okay like so 11.5 right so i'll then connect it okay then the next thing would be to mark the length of the scale like i said it's 30 inches okay so i'm going to be adding one inch to it so that's hemming allowance okay so i'm marking 31 so instead of 30 i'm marking 31 so i'll be marking 31 all the way round okay like so okay so i'm marking it 31 from the radius right now okay as you can see so you keep marking it round like so like so right so if you're watching till now and you haven't subscribed you haven't turned on post notification you've not liked okay please i beg okay like my video you know share it with your friends and your family and other soulmates okay try to you know subscribe and turn on post notifications thank you so much as you do that god bless you please try to you know share this video right so i'll cut through the length okay that's it like so so remember i had an ss okay when i folded using the pattern using the pattern so you also have that excess so you're going to cut it out okay that ss is from your folding okay so you just trim it off okay so but why trimming this off you have to be very careful so that you don't cut through the folded edge okay if you are working directly on your fabric you would see or even your pattern you see that that part that lower that upper part is folded okay so you don't need to trim that point okay so i have my 180 degree flare right so i'm going to open it up for us to see so this how it's going to be so beautiful so i would go you know pad my princess that was chair turn the, the the sides with my lining then go attach my 180 degree flare. you can see how it flares you can see super beautiful you can have this as a skirt you can attach it to a bodice to make a dress it's really beautiful okay so we'll go back to the upper part right so i've joined okay i've padded and i've joined and this is what i have you can see how this cup is standing standing firm okay okay nothing is going to push this bust down nothing okay so i've padded very neatly okay i have a tutorial on my channel on how to sew um your princess that was here to pad iron it okay i'll also be dropping the link in the description box so this is my yoke you can see i have half inch below and half inch around my neckline okay so i'm going to be attaching the yoke now you attach the yoke after sewing the princess that together right so that's how to um do this okay so i've placed the yoke okay this is how it's going to be all right so this is my yoke you can see and that's the bodice like so you can see that it matches up so i'm going to flip it okay you can see it matches up even with your armhole so i'll just flip it like so okay then if you're not 
setting on how to do this you can just fold it into two okay and notch the midpoint of your yoke okay so then you also fold your bodice into two and also notch the midpoint okay so i've just joined this i've not ironed i only joined it and notched it but you can see how firm it's standing imagine when i'm not coming with my iron you know give it one or two hot slaps <laughs> in my iron okay it's going to just be wow right so i'll just place um the yoke the notched parts together like so then come in with my pin okay then pin it like so then i'm going to pin it around uh the bodice like so i'm just going to pin the yoke around like so gently so that you get all the points okay so you pin right so I also go to this side and you know pin you can see that it matches up Remember to add half inch to the lower part of your yoke and half inch to the upper part of your bodice, right? So I'm just going to stitch with half inch. That's the essence of that half inch you added. That allowance is, I said you should add to your yoke and the bodice. It's just the allowance to sew the yoke to the bodice, okay? So I'm just going to go to my sewing machine and sew with half inch, right? Okay, so while you do that, also prepare your lining. Okay, you're going to cut your lining exactly as you've cut your fabric. Then you're also going to join the lining, okay? The same way you've joined the fabric. So you can see that I joined with half inch. You can see this is my half inch, okay? So I'm going to turn the lining now. I'm going to I'm going to introduce the line. So this is my lining piece. You can see I've sewn the lining. So I'm going to make the right side of the lining to face the right side of my fabric, okay? Then hold it together at where I have sewn my yoke, okay? Then pin it down, okay? So when I pin it all the way around, following the same thing I did, I'm going to still follow the same stitch line I used, okay? Or even a little bit lower so that it's not showing. The stitches are not showing. I'll just go and sew with half inch, okay? That way, I'm going to use the lining to turn both the bodies and the yoke so that everything is going to come out very neat and clean, okay? While we are designers, so we, so we also need to make sure that the dresses we are designing are very clean inside and outside, okay? So you can see, that's what I've done. I've stitched it. I have to go in with a white stretch so that you can see. So I stitch it, stitch it all the way round it, okay? So what I'm going to do now is going is to notch. Okay, you need to notch this properly so that it's going to relax well. So you can see the way I'm notching. I'm not just making cuts around it. Okay, there are different types of notches and they work depending on the type of uh, dress or outfit you're making. Okay, so it needs different types of notches. Okay, there are different types of notches. So this is the type I'm doing. Just open up the spaces around the space. Okay, not spaces, the space. Yeah, the space. Correct. Okay, just so that everything is going to lay out flat by the time I turn it, okay? So that's why I am notching it like this and not just making small, small cuts around it, okay? Just to give it room or space, yes. Okay, so after that, I'm just going to flip it over. You remember, always cut off your excess threads, okay? So when I flip it over like so, you can see that the yoke is sandwiched in between the lining and the main bodice. Okay, so this is how the inside would look very neat. You can see, and the outside the same thing. Okay, so what I'll do is to go flip it back again. Okay, then make sure that you take away the yoke so it's not coming in contact with the fabric and the lining. So I'll go and stitch with half inch on the two sides. Okay, towards the sides, and stitch with half inch so that by the time you flip it over, everywhere is just going to be so neat. Okay, everything is going to be so neat. So I'm done doing that. Okay, and I'll flip it from the lower part. Okay, I'll just open it from that point to now show us what we have. All right, so you can see that we have it clearly finished. Okay, it's just the armhole and the lower part. Okay, so we just the, the the lower part you're going to attach it to your 180 degree flare. Then the armhole you attach your sleeve to it and overlock your edges. That way you have a pretty neat uh, dress that you've designed. Okay, so that is it. Super beautiful. So I'm trimming off the excess on the lining. Okay, that's it. So you're going to give it a good press. I haven't pressed. Okay, I'm working without light. Okay, so I make sure I notch so that I have you know good results so that when I press, 
everything will now you know come up together okay so this is it so i'm just going to go to the back and use my lining to turn the side seam for the back okay i'm not going to turn the neckline of the back okay i'm not turning the neckline so i use the line to turn the side seam and the zip allowance okay just like i showed you on the front bodies okay so i flipped the lining and stitched the lining to the neckline okay stitch it to the neckline then i've also gone in to take my zip allowance okay so after that i'll just go and join attach the shoulder and taking my body measurements okay on the bodies okay so after that we'll now open up the zip allowance and attach your um, 180 degree flare okay so this is what i've done you can see i've joined the shoulder i've also taken my body measurements okay so you work with your own accurate measurements i'm trimming off any excess that i may have okay so you can see the back i've taken the measurement this is my zip allowance okay and this is the front all right so i'm just going to go back to the back and open up my zip allowance okay please don't do this so if you're not sure of what you're doing what i do is just to make sure that i'm stitching on it i'm using a very loose stitch to sew the zip allowance so that by the time i just strip it with my hands it will come off but if you use a tight stitch please use a semi par or a blunt blade okay so that you don't tear your fabric right so when i open this up like so i'm going to now go and attach the 180 degree flare okay to the waistline okay so this is it so now what i'll do would be to attach it okay right sides facing right sides okay i'll go and sew it all the way around okay so that is it then after that you go and you cannot you can either overlock the hem of the 180 degree flare or you can use a bias but using a bias can be very stressful so i like to overlock it then stitch it all the way around hem it all the way around okay so i'm done attaching that okay then i'll also i've also hemmed the lower part okay this just needs good ironing all right so i've also attached my zipper so the next thing would be to make the color now the way i attached my zip i made sure that i use the whole the zipper around the upper part okay i did take away and i just attached it all the way like that okay when i now attach my collar it would cover up for those parts those upper part of zip that we like to take away when we are attaching our zip you know now when you're sewing your zip you like to throw away the point before the zipper stopper okay the zip stopper i like to throw it out but i'm sewing it all from the upper part of the zip to the lower part okay then i'll use my color to turn it okay so now to make my color i'm going to measure around the neckline from where i have my zip i'm going to measure it all the way around okay so you can do this twice or thrice okay two times or three times just to confirm the value you have there because once you cut the color you've cut it okay or well, except to have um more fabric to spare okay but i like to do things once and for all and have a beautiful turnout all right so measure the circumference around the neck i have 18.5 okay so the value i got is 18.5 right okay so i'm just going to you know keep this aside okay keep the bodies the dress aside it's not a dress it's no longer a bodies okay the next the thing to do now is just to cut out this collar and attach my sleeve and will be you know true so remember the value we got is 18.5 okay so note that the value we have is 18.5 okay so i'm just going to start cutting out my color okay 18.5 please note you have it at the back of your mind okay so this is my pattern now okay so exactly what i'm cutting on this pattern i'll cut on my fabric but i'm just making a pattern so that you can see what i'm doing clearly so i'm going to fold like this fold into two like this okay so the length of what i'm folding is 3.5 that's the length i want for my color you can do four you can do whatever you want but i'm doing i want a color that is three inches long okay the extra half inch is to attach the same allowance to attach the color to the dress okay so what i'm folding is 3.5 okay so i make sure I'm, please don't mind that little hand you are seeing if it's a big girl please don't mind her okay so I'm marking 3.5 you can see that the fold 
I have is 3.5. Okay, so just take it down to confirm the figure that you have. They're very, very important. Okay, so I'll trim off the SS. Okay, just so that we'll concentrate on our working pattern. Okay, so I'll take that aside. All right so um afterwards i'm going remember we have 18.5 okay so 18.5 plus one inch that would be 19.5 okay or better still i'm going to divide 18.5 by two okay and that will give me 9.25 i'm going to add one inch to my allowance to it i'll show us what you need the one inch for okay later so 9.25 plus one that's 10.25 so i'm going to fold this Okay, so your folding is supposed to be 10.25. So I'm going to fold. This is bigger than 10.25. So I'm going to fold into to get the way I folded. You now mark 10.25. Like so. Okay. 10.25. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay, this is the color. We already added our one inch in allowance. Okay, so just make sure that you have accurately that round neck circumference plus that one inch. Okay. Very, very important so you don't want to have the color bigger than the neckline okay so i've marked the 10.25 i'll just connect that in a straight line right okay so i'll just trim off okay so after connecting in a straight line okay i'll just cut off the excess okay so we'll concentrate on you know making this beautiful color now the last thing was going to just do give the shape of the color okay so towards that point i'm just going to fold it back into two okay remember how many times we folded though i'll fold it back into two okay all right so i'll now give the color the shape it has okay or the shape it needs so you can do half inch or one inch okay below okay at that folded okay so towards that folded part so you mark either half inch or one inch depending on your preference so i'm going to stick with one inch so i'll make a slant line towards the lower part and that's just it okay so if you want for half inch you can do half inch if you want one inch you can okay so i'm just going to trim that off okay so when i open it i'm going to have my color okay i need two colors okay i need to so this is for the first one and this is the second one so when you do this method you get your two colors at the same time and note that you can actually draft this directly on your fabric i only did it on the pattern for clarity purposes okay so this is how it's going to be you can see that uh, shape that v shape it has around the color so what you do is to go fold it back okay fold it to the wrong side and before this make sure you use your interface and you can use your gum stay or your paper stay okay then you fold it back to the wrong side then stitch half inch on both sides so that's the essence of that one inch seam allowance that we added earlier so you go and stitch half inch on both sides of the two colors okay so i'll go transfer this pattern to my fabric and do exactly as i have said All right so i'm done stitching um the color okay this the two sides of the color okay you can see my interface and i also interfaced using gum stay okay so these are the two patterns and this is it transferred to my fabric is exactly the same thing okay so what i did was this is the first one i trimmed off the ss seam allowance okay so the other one i just notched so you can make do with your notches or just trimming off the seam allowance but i like the feel of trimming off the seam allowance because it gives you less bulkiness at the seam all right so i'll trim off the same allowance okay then i'll turn the color to the right side okay so when you turn it to the right side you're going to use the tip of your scissors to push it in so that everything comes out neatly then you go back to your ironing table and give it a very good press okay so this is what it looks like afterwards so i'll turn out the other color exactly the same way i did for the first one okay so i'll just push it out so that i have everything turned to the right side okay just use your scissors and make sure you don't rip uh, the fabric open right so i'm just going to push it all out then go and iron so afterwards this is what i'll have you can see the v-shape okay so i'm now going to 
stitch it round my neckline okay so you get your dress okay it's now a dress okay so you open it up and go to the neckline now what you would do if you want to attach this accurately you're going to open up your zip allowance then bring uh, the collar or the neckline okay so that you would notch the midpoint okay so you open up your zip allowance like you see me do then you try to flip your part your fabric right now okay so that you can get the midpoint of the front okay so that will guarantee where you would place um the the colors okay the two of them so that would guarantee where you would place them okay so opening it up like this you make sure you match up the shoulder seam make sure that the zip allowance at the back everything is matching properly and you have the midpoint okay so you're just going to go ahead and give it a notch you can see okay so i'm still doing it just to make sure that everything properly uh, matches okay yeah freeze well it's not long okay so i've notched it you can see my notch okay so i'm going to open up the zipper very well so that you can easily attach your color so you just get one side of the color i'll be attaching it from the inside okay so i'll place one side of the color at where i have my notch so i'm just going to use a pin to you know pin it all round okay you need to pin very very important at this point you need to pin it down so that you hold everything down so that when stitching it's actually very easy for you to stitch it round and also so that your color is not moving around so you don't misplace it okay so you need to pin okay so what you do is just to feed the color all through okay even to the zip allowance okay to that point okay to where you have attached your zip so you're just going to go ahead and pin all the way around pinning is very very essential here okay i'm advanced is not here i'll just make sure that you pin okay so you pin okay so i'll just get the other Color. you can see i've attached this one so when you're done you now flip it to the right side okay so that's the essence of you know joining from the inside okay so i'm also going to get the other color okay you're going to slant it a bit so that you have that uh in upside v shape that you're supposed to have so i'm just going to fix it the same way i've done to the other side pin it all the way around pin it okay like so okay so i'll just go pin it round then take it to the sewing machine and stitch on half inch remember when i adapted my pattern when i transferred it to my fabric i added um half inch seam allowance okay so that seam allowance would be used to stitch the collar okay to the dress i remember that i also added a half inch seam allowance to my collar I said I wanted a color height of three inches, but I made three and a half so that I can attach the color. Right, so I'm done joining my color, and this is what it looks like. Very, very beautiful. You can see. So that's the back, and this is the front. So you can see that everything clearly matches. So you don't want to have the rough edges sticking out from underneath the color. Okay, remember we joined from inside. So what you would do, you have two options. You can now fold by a quarter of an inch in two places. Okay, just fold in that seam allowance and go and stitch it all the way down. That way you have a very super clean collar. Okay, fold it like so and go stitch it all the way round like so. Okay, so another thing you can do is to take it to your weaving machine or your or your overlocker, weave it all through, then top stitch on it. Okay, top stitch it so that the seam allowance is on the yoke. Okay, so I'm done, and this is what our dress looks like. It's super beautiful. You can see the color standing firm and beautiful. And this is the bust the princess that bust here. And at the lower part, we have our 180 degree flare. So, like I said earlier, this tutorial or this video is packed with lots and lots of sewing tips. I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, so if you found this video helpful, please ensure to subscribe, turn on your notification bell so you get notified each time I upload a new video. Like and share this video with your friends, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.